were called the Midnight Society. Separately, we're very different. We like different things. We go to different schools, and we have different friends. But one thing draws us together, the dark. Each week, we gather around this fire to share our fears and our strange and scary tales. It's what got us together, and it's what keeps bringing us back. This is a warning to all who join us. You're going to leave the comfort of the light and step into the world of the supernatural. Hey, watch it, man. I'm sorry. Frank Moore, you're here to be considered as a new member of the Midnight Society. Yeah, what's with the blindfold? This meeting place is secret? Yeah, and you're not in yet. Swell. Who sponsors Frank? I do. He's a good guy. Yeah, but can he tell a good story? Who said that? To be a member, you have to tell us a scary tale. Then we vote. And it has to be unanimous or you're not in. You ready? Hey, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Ooh, I'm scared now. Yo, take this thing off. Sorry. Not unless you get in. You're the sponsor, Dave. You gotta start it. Remember how to do it? Just say the word. Anytime. Okay, let's do it. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story... The Tale of the Phantom Cab. Denny and Buzz were brothers. Denny was big, strong, and smart. Buzz was, well, kind of a geek. He wanted to prove himself to his big brother. What neither guy knew was that on this hiking trip, Buzz was gonna get the chance. Where are we, Tonto? This is strange. We're lost, aren't we? Don't sweat, Denny. I know how to plot a course. You never trust me. I did trust you, and you got us lost, Cheeseball. We're not lost. Watch it. Great lame wad. Now we're lost, and we can't read the map. You are such a loser. I'm not a loser, and we're not lost. Look, there's the ridge we came up on. We can circle back and take the red trail. Man, this is whacked. Watch the edge. Whoa! Grab my hand! I can't! I'll fall! Grab it, you jerk! Hey, I saved the compass. I should have let you fall. The guys really were lost. It was just a pain at first, but nighttime was coming on fast, and it was getting cold. It doesn't make sense. You even know how to use this? Give me a break. We've been going south for hours. We should have been in town by now. Look, the needle points north, and we're headed south. What can I say? That the way you always hold it? Yeah, so? Your belt buckle, genius. It's metal. The needle's always gonna point to it because it's a magnet. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. We've been going the wrong way all day. Now we're lost and it's freezing. You are worthless. No, no. I know this place. We've got to be close to town. Slow down! There's trail up here! Come on! 
I should pound you. Look! Someone's coming! Maybe it's a ranger. Or maybe it's a hiker that knows his way back to town. I hope he's got a blanket. I'm freezing. Me too. Forget it. You can freeze. Maybe it's a maniac killer in a hockey mask who's gonna slash us. Or maybe you should stay here and let me do the talking. Uh, hey, hello? Who's there? Oh, turn off the brights. Hello. What have we here? I'm Buzz, and this is Denny. We got lost and we can't find the trail back to town. Easy, Toad. You're not a ranger, are you? <laughs> ranger? <laughs> no, not me. I'm a traveler, same as you. Flynn's the name. <laughs> so what are you doing up here? Are you lost too? Lost me? <laughs> oh, you might say that. Though I suppose I couldn't be truly lost. I know these woods too well. We far from town? Farther than you know, my friends. Farther than you know. So can you help us get back? Me? Yeah, you. I don't see anybody else here. You guys look half frozen. Tell you what. You follow me. And I'll lead you to someone who can help you. Wait. I wouldn't go with him. It gives me the creeps. You got a better idea? Don't worry. I can handle this too. Why don't you just tell us how to get back? Too far, you never find your way in the dark. So who's this guy you're taking us to? Good doctor. He's got a cottage a little ways up here. In the woods? What kind of a doctor lives in the woods? Patience, boys, you'll see. By the way, <clears throat> how are you guys at solving riddles? Riddles, why? Just asking. Just asking. There you go, boys. The home of the good doctor. Just like I promised. You guys thought I was joking, didn't you? Who lives here, the seven dwarfs? There's just one thing, guys. Before you go asking the doctor for help, you make sure you really need it. Why? Well, sometimes the price he charges is a little, uh, steep. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you just tell us how... Yo, Flynn! This is creepy. Let's bolt. To where? We're lost, remember? You're not going in there. What else are we gonna do? It's freezing. Maybe he's got a phone. Back off, would you? I'm sorry I got us lost, Danny. Don't worry, I'll smack you when we get home. What's that? Flynn, I know it's you. He's trying to scare us. He's doing a good job. <gasps> that can't be him, too. Probably a raccoon. That's no raccoon! Danny, what's going on? Danny! Come on. What's there? I don't know. Open up! You boys have made a very grave mistake. I don't suppose either of you are any good at riddles. <laughs> uh, I think we have the wrong house. Bye. Boys, boys, you've made a mistake. If you're at my door at this time of night, you've taken a wrong turn and lost your way, correct? Yeah. Happens all the time. Come in, come in, get warm. Vink's the name, Dr. Vink. 
Dr. Fink? Fink, with a v, 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 v. Who wants tea? I do. Hot tea on a cold night. Perfect. Uh, Flynn said you could help us find a way to get back to it. Natural science. Huh? That's why I'm here, in case you're wondering. I've dedicated my life to studying flora and fauna. Who? There are many strange and wonderful things that occur in nature, but no one takes the time to really look and study. Observe. This guy's a nutbag. Behold, a true wonder of nature. The brain of a wild boar. Ew, cool. I've discovered that long after the body dies, the brain still gives off electric impulses. Can you imagine if that energy could be harnessed? And I am not a nutbag. Look, our parents are probably going nuts by now, and, uh... Riddles. How are you boys at Riddles? Doc, we're tired and we just want to go home. Indeed, indeed. But first, a riddle. Try this one. How far can you walk into the woods? We don't want to do riddles. But you must. Riddles exercise your brain. And where would you be with no brain? I don't know. Ask the wild boar. Halfway. Say what? He asked how far he can walk into the woods. Halfway. After that, you'd be walking out. Good, very good. <laughs> you may do. Uh, I'm gonna call our folks. No, no, not yet. We've only just begun. No, I think we're done. We play by my rules, but we don't play. What do you want? Another riddle. Here's the deal. I ask you a riddle, and if you solve it, you can call your parents. And if we don't solve it? Then you leave. That's it? We just leave? Simple, no? Let's do it. I'm good at riddles. Okay, what's the riddle? Wonderful! Wonderful! Now, what riddle? Let's see, there's the... No, not that one. Maybe the... No. Ah! The perfect choice. This is a riddle that has perplexed many and confounded even more. And now, young lads, it's your turn to solve it. Here we go. What is it that has no weight, can be seen by the naked eye, and if you put it in a barrel, it would make the barrel lighter? I hate riddles. OK, it's weightless, it can be seen by the naked eye, and if put in a barrel, would make the barrel lighter. So? I don't know. Goodbye. I knew you wouldn't get it. Wait, that riddle was too hard. Give us another one. You had your chance and failed, like all the others. Others? What others? Go away. You know where the door is. But we're lost. Take a left on the trail, follow it to the dirt road, and wait. A taxi cab will pick you up. A cab? In the woods? Comes by every night. Hurry, or you'll miss it. Come on, Doc, just let us use the phone. There is one way, I suppose. What? What's that? You can leave me a specimen. A specimen? You're much smarter than your brother gives you credit for. What kind of specimen? 
something I can use in my experiments. Something valuable. Something fresh. Something like this. Goodbye, for now. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, no fair. You can't put a riddle in a story that can't be solved. Maybe it can. Yeah, right. It's weightless, you can see it, and if you put it in a barrel, it makes the barrel lighter. No way. Sounds like one of those riddles you can't solve. That's a cheat. No. Maybe it can be solved. Maybe you should all just lighten up and let me finish the story. Thank you. So, Danny and Buzz beat feet back into the woods. All they wanted was to get as far away from Dr. Vink as possible. Hey, Danny! Wait up! Was... Was that somebody's hand? You saw it. The guy's a lunatic. As soon as we get home, I'm calling the cops. We're still lost, you know? Yeah, I know. You really think a cab's gonna come by? Get real. There's no cabs in the woods. No. No way. He wasn't lying. It's a taxi cab. Man, are we ever glad you came by? Take us into town. Our parents will pay the fare when we get home. Don't worry. I know you're good for it. Flynn! I figured I'd run into you guys again. I guess you didn't solve the riddle. How do you know? Who are you? Well, I give a ride to folks who, uh, can't answer Dr. Vink's riddles. Happened to me around 40 years ago. Whoa, slow down. 40 years ago? Mm-hmm. I gave Dr. Vink a ride up here in my cab. He offered me a big tip if I could solve the riddle. I couldn't, so he took a specimen from me. What kind of specimen? You didn't see it at his house? Ooh, boy. <laughs> I think it's one of his favorites. What is it? It's not what it is, it's what it was. Oh! He took your hand? I got off easy. For 40 years I've been bringing folks up to Dr. Vink's, hoping they can solve the riddle. But they don't, so they all end up here with me. What happens to them? Hey, Dr. Vink's needs his specimens. You're a lying sack. First of all, you're not that old. Didn't I tell you? Before the good doctor got his specimen, uh, I had myself a nasty little accident. I crashed into this big old tree. You might say... I sort of died! <laughs> <laughs> ah! Stop the car! Stop the car! They all die, just like me. Every night I have the same accident with a different fare. It's kind of a curse. You probably heard some of uh, my fares up around Dr. Vink's house. The bushes! There were ghosts! Nobody can leave until someone solves Dr. Vink's riddle. I was hoping the two of you could do it. You know, somehow break the spell. Oh, well, <sighs> wait till you see the accident we're gonna have. Oh, it's gonna be a real doozy. This is your fault. You said you could solve the riddle. Still got time. We don't crash for another oh, 30 seconds. Think fast, boys. Think! Okay, okay. It's weightless. It can be seen by the naked eye. And it's put in a barrel. It'll make the barrel lighter. We're dead. We're dead! I can't think like this! You have to! It's helium! Helium will make the barrel later. But you can't see helium! Won't be long now. What can you see that's weightless? Nothing! Air! But you can't see air! Or can you? Wait a second, there's a trick here. 
You can't put something in the barrel to make it lighter. You have to take something out. If you take something out of the barrel itself, it'll be lighter. Wait till you see the explosion we're gonna make. I got it! I know the answer! What is it? It's weightless, you can see it, and if you put it in a barrel, it'll make the barrel lighter. Say it! It's a hole! It's a hole in the barrel! Here we go! Yeah! We didn't crash. We're alive. Where's the cab? It's gone. We broke the curse. We're saved. <laughs> uh, we didn't break the curse. You did. Nice going. But you're still a loser. Oh, man, not again. You Denny and Buzz Crocker? Yeah. yeah. Your parents have been going nuts looking for you. The whole town's in an uproar. Come on, get in. What are you boys doing here, anyway? Tell me something. How are you at Riddles? No one ever saw the Phantom Cab again. And when the boys brought the police back to Dr. Vink's cottage, all that was left was an old stone foundation covered with weeds. The end. And now the vote. Thumbs up means Frank's in, thumbs down he's not. And it has to be unanimous. David? Kiki? Betty Ann? Kristen? Eric? And me. Congratulations, Frank. Welcome to the Midnight Society. All right. Good job. Yeah. This is gonna be good. All right. Yeah. I didn't mean to scare David, you. David, don't do that. I'm sorry. I just wanted to catch you before the meeting. To, uh... To what? <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, David, how did you know my birthday's next week? Uh, I don't know what to say. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> um, well, we're late. I'll open it after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Come on. Ta-da! You're such a talent. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck! I could have choked! Go ahead. Take your best shot. Come on, guys. Lighten up. Sorry. What happened? You should have waited two more minutes. Eric was going to attack Frank. Yeah. In his dreams. Start fast, the natives are restless. My story's got to do with two kids who don't get along because they're so different from each other. And a love that is so strong, it can survive anything, even death, forever. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story Tale of the Lonely Ghost. It 
It was the beginning of summer vacation, and every kid in town was psyched. Every kid, except Amanda Cameron, that is. We're here, everybody out. Her mom and dad were some kind of scientists who had to travel up north to study Inuit stone carvings. So Amanda was shipped off to her Aunt Dottie's place for the summer. Oops. Oh, shoot. Sweetie, what in the world did your mother put in here? <laughs> Books. Books? Feels like you've got a whole set of encyclopedias. Beth! Beth, lovey, your cousin Amanda's here. Could you give us a hand? Beth? She must be on the phone again. We'll just do this ourselves. Unfortunately for Amanda, spending a whole summer with Cousin Bethy was going to be even less fun than staring at a bunch of old rocks with her mom and dad for two months. I'll get this. What was that? What was what? It's like banging coming from over there. Oh, not that place, sweetie. No one's been in there for years. <laughs> I should know. I'm the real estate agent. I can't even get people to look at the place. <laughs> I wish it would just... <gasps> Sometimes I think this house just doesn't want to be sold. Come on, let's get you inside and unpacked. You should see what she's wearing. My mom better not expect me to babysit that dweeb all summer. Uh, she's here, I gotta go. Look who's here, honey. Come on in, Mandy. Hi, Beth. Hi. You'll be sharing Beth's room so the two of you can stay up all night giggling and talking. This is where Nanny used to sleep when Beth was little. Well, I'll leave you two alone to get reacquainted. Have fun. I suppose she told you we're going to do all sorts of fun stuff together. Yeah. Wrong. If you think I'm going to hang with you all summer, you're nuts. I don't think she means for you to hang with just me. We could do stuff with your friends. You don't even know my friends. They could get to know me. Why? It's not like just anyone can hang with us. You have to prove you're not a Zeeb. How does one prove that they're not a Zeeb? OK, look. You want to hang with us? You got to follow the rules. What rules? Okay, first off, I don't even want to know that you're here. That means putting my animal collection back every day in the exact right places. In fact, I don't feel like having my room look like a disaster all day, so do it now. And you can't go crying to mom or nanny ever, no matter what happens. Fine, I'll put everything back in the right order every day. And I won't snitch. Easy. Then there's the most important thing. What's that? The initiation. Initiation? Oh, yeah. Anyone who hangs with us has to spend a night alone in the place next door. It's haunted. Dear Mom and Dad, I hope you're having a good time. I am too. You must be Amanda. I'm Nanny. No! If you touch...
touch our contaminated, wrinkly old hand, I'll never let you touch my things again. Don't you ever talk to her. Who is she? My nanny, and I want her gone. Why? Because I'm too old for a nanny. And she's so weird. I hate how she's always watching me. She seems kind of sad to me. She's crazy, really crazy. I know for a fact there's something funny with her in the haunted place next door. I heard my parents talking once. I think she must have been driven insane by the ghost. Which reminds me, there's a pool party at Sally's on Saturday. I suppose you want to come. Sure. Don't get too excited. You can't come unless you go through the initiation. The night in the haunted house? You got it. Tomorrow night. Pleasant dreams. Are you OK? You dropped this. Thank you. Is that Beth's laundry? Oh, that's okay. It won't take me long. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. She's so weird. And I'm too old for a nanny. Why doesn't she just leave? I'm not going to argue. I told you before. She has nowhere to go. I wish she did, but she doesn't. There you are, honey, sleeping in. Now, Beth, I don't want to hear any more rudeness. I'm going roller skating. Don't touch my stuff. Why does everyone think it's haunted anyway? They don't think it's haunted. They know it's haunted, and this is why. A long, long time ago, there was a little girl who lived there. All the kids made fun of her because she couldn't talk. Why couldn't she talk? I don't know. She just couldn't. Maybe she was deaf. It doesn't matter. Just listen. Sorry. Anyway, one day, her mom got a letter that her dad, who was away in the war, had gotten sick. So she sent the little girl to stay with her grandmother while she went away to take care of him. Only the little girl didn't make it to her grandmother's. Because on the way, some mean kids surrounded her and teased her. She ran back home to get away from them, and they followed her followed her right into her very own home. They locked her in her bedroom, and she didn't escape alive. What happened? No one knew she was there. Her mother didn't come back for weeks, and her grandmother didn't even know she was coming. When they found her, she was dead. And that's where you have to go, her bedroom. We'll know you're in there by the light from this. The keys to the front door. Won't Aunt Dottie miss them? No way. No one ever calls to see the place. It's just too scary. chicken if you'd rather spend the whole summer alone reading. No, I'm going in. I don't believe in ghosts anyway. Neither did we until we spent the night in there. We all did this. <laughs> Thank you. 
very funny, you guys. I know that's you trying to scare me. backwards. Help me? Where did Beth go? Beth went to Sally's for the whole night. Aunt Dottie was working late. That means Amanda was home alone with Nanny. She should have stayed with the ghost. Now she's alone with a lunatic. Nanny isn't a lunatic. Beth just told Amanda that to scare her. But you probably didn't get that. Guys, come on. So what happened, Dave? When Aunt Dottie came home, Amanda told her everything that had happened. What are those for? I'm very disappointed in you girls. I don't know who did the writing on the wall. I didn't. And I don't want to know. But you two girls are going to go over there and scrub it off before I get back. Will you come with us? I will not. I have two open houses today and a closing at 6. If you two girls went over there last night, you can go over there now. But there's a ghost. Oh, please. You can do better than that. Now, come on, come on, let's go. It's all your fault. You're such a chicken. I'm not, and I don't want to be in your lame group anymore. Good, I wasn't going to let you in anyway. And you're a snitch, too. You're a chicken and a snitch. I couldn't stand being you. <sighs> Give me a break. It's not even dark. You can't be scared now. One thing's for sure, I'm never inviting you to do anything with us ever again. Hello? Wow. No wonder Mom was so mad. You did this just to get me in trouble, didn't you? I didn't do it. It wasn't like this last night. <sighs> yeah, right. Well, if you think that I'm gonna clean up a mess that you made, now what? Come on, let's go. Wow. Look at all the dolls and stuffed animals. What an awesome collection. It's even bigger than mine. Beth, no!
It's Nanny. Your... your mother? Nanny's your mother? Help me? Help you? I, I, I can help you, yes. Um, please, open the door and I can help you. I'll get her, I will. Please. Thank you, I, I'll get her. No, don't go, Amanda, you have to help me. I'm stuck in the mirror. Amanda, can't you see me? I hope I'm gonna get out of here. Memories. You girls can go and play your jokes on someone else. No, it's not a joke, please. No, I'm leaving. I'm not wanted here anymore. Yes, you are. Look. Where did you get this? No. No, no, I can't. No, it's too hard. I can't. You guys are both over here. Please, Amanda, help me! Are you gonna stop bossing me around? Yes. Are you gonna stop bossing your friends around? Yes. Oh, okay, I'll let you out. <laughs> you know, Beth, I think we're gonna have to make some changes in this group. <laughs> So what happened with Amanda and Beth? Amanda had a great summer. She even let Beth hang with the group. Good story, Dave. Excellent. Really cool. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Next week, everybody. Come on, Zeeb. I'll buy you soda to cool you off. Ow, 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 ow. Kristen? Yeah? Aren't you going to? Oh, the present. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Your story was so good. That's OK. Oh, look, 
it like in your story. You like it? I love it, it's beautiful, but you shouldn't have gotten this. What do you think? Perfect. I knew it would be. I'll think of you every time I wear it. Forever. Let's catch up. was called Playland, and it was the best. You could laugh and scream and get scared to death on rides and stuff up on junk food and ditch your parents all in one night. And there was a spook house called Laughing in the Dark. What's the matter? I was just getting started. This is a clown story. I hate clowns. They're creepy. They give me nightmares. Where's my thermos? Oh, oh, I heard of that. They call it bozophobia. Guess we finally found something wrong with Miss Perfect. Ooh. Hey, I didn't say it. Go ahead. Do your worst. Go on, Vet. Let's see if she can handle it. Here, start for real this time. Okay. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story The Tale of Laughing in the Dark. It was Friday night and Playland was jammed. For thousands of kids, it had everything they wanted. But for one kid, it had just a little too much. Man, that was cool. I know. Man, that was awesome. Yeah. Don't give me that. You almost curled. Did not. So why were you screaming, stop the ride? Oh, please, stop the ride. Because Kathy was scared. Was not. You were going to bark. You snitch. Maybe I should barf right now. On you. <laughs> You ever been there? No. Let's go in. What's the matter? I'm not going in there. They say it's really haunted. <laughs> Give me a break. I heard the same thing. Weird things happen in there. Something to do with a clown. Luigi, it's a kitty ride. I could see your twerpy sister being chicken. But you, come on. I'm not a twerpy chicken. That's uh, funny. Smells a little foul to me. <laughs> Both of you are chicken. <laughs> Excuse me, lad. Don't believe in old Zebo, eh? Who are you? I run this place, I do. And he's in there, all right. Just wait. Pick the right door and you go free. Pick the wrong door and there he'll be. <laughs> Care to give it a go? <laughs> Coming in, Mr. Brave Young Lad? Uh, maybe another time. Suit yourself. <laughs> I'll be here. I'm always here. Fine. 
not thinking of all the nightmares you're gonna have tonight? Oh, man, give her a break. Keep going, Bet. Yeah, what kind of strange stuff happened inside the ride? Well, that's what the kids wanted to know, especially Ouija. Most of this is pretty boring. It's all pretty boring if you ask me. We didn't ask you. Mm -hmm. But then I found this. KT Clown, Cotton Clamby. The Laughing in the Dark Spook House isn't the original. There was another one on the same spot back in the 1920s. Yes, yeah, so? So, in 1924, the circus came to town and set up near Playland. I guess one of the clowns, some dude named Zebo, was a real foul ball. A clown known as Zebo stole the whole entire circus payroll of $4,000. Wow. He got caught, though, and they chased him into Playland. He ran into the spook house, and he would have gotten away, except for one thing. The cigar. Cigar? Zebo smoked cigars. The police figured he threw one away in the spook house because the whole place caught fire with him inside. A fire spread quickly and attempts to rescue Zebo were futile. Tragically, the clown perished in the inferno. Ew. <laughs> Smoking's bad for your health. A couple years later, they built another laughing in the dark and made a spooky dummy of Zebo at the end to scare everyone. Legend has it that... Legend has it. The ghost of Zebo is still there. Trapped for all time. Exactly. I bet I know why, too. Why? I bet he likes to trap small children inside. And tickle them! <laughs> tickle, tickle, tickle! Here comes Zebo to tickle you! <laughs> Joy! Don't mess, or I'll bung you in the head. Lighten up, will you, Josh? Me? You guys are the Phoebes. You really think there's a ghost clown hanging around in some dumb old ride? Kids have seen things in there. They've heard things, too. It's a spook house, lame ball. It's supposed to be spooky. You gotta be some kind of doofus to think it's real. Boo! Ah! You don't see me getting scared of that junk. Yeah? If you're so brave, why didn't you go in? In fact, I dare you to go in. Alone. Why should I? Because I think you're just as chicken as we are. You just don't want to admit it. You're gonna eat those words. How are we gonna make sure he goes all the way inside? You're not, twerp, unless you wanna come with me. She's right. You could just hang right inside the door and never go through. Tell you what, Gutless. Not only am I gonna go through this whole place alone, but when I find the dummy clown, I'm gonna steal his nose. And you're gonna wear it to school for a week. No way. Hey, I thought you were so sure I couldn't do it. What's the matter, Ouija? You getting chicken again? You get it. I'll wear it. Now I'm gonna show you guys how stupid it is being scared of this place. to scare you. Gonna give it a go, huh? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not indeed. It's the most fun in the park when you're laughing in the dark. Grip, Josh. <laughs> Look at me, I'm Zebo. <laughs> Zebo, Zebo. <laughs> Hand over the dough. What do you think I am, some kind of clown? <laughs> what do you think I am, some kind of clown? Maybe we shouldn't let him go in there all alone. No, he deserves this.
I know it's you, old man. You can't scare me. Kiss this place goodbye. If I don't get that nose of dead meat. hurt you stop being such a wuss and just do it <laughs> all right thanks guy you just made me a hero I'm the guy who beats Ebo <laughs> You can still smell your stinky cigars without your nose. <laughs> Kristen, you can't take it. I'm fine. Keep going. Okay. Well, Josh was pretty cocky before, but after he stole Zebo's nose, he was uncontrollable. Weege, it's you. The guys at school are gonna think so too. <laughs> Not funny. Sorry. After you get through wearing it, I'm gonna get it mounted, like a trophy. Oh, please? Then I'm gonna get it engraved. The kid who beat Zebo. Cool or what? <laughs> Come on, you must have been a little scared in there. No way! I'm telling you, it's all kid stuff with fake dummies and bogus sound effects. Of course, it uh, might have been scary for some people. People that say, bark, bark, bark. <laughs> Enough, all right? You're a hero and I'm a loser. What can I say? Now, now, let's not be bad sports. Besides, you look much better with the nose on. <laughs> I'll get it for you. He's such a snot. Come on. Cigars?
I'm home. Mom? Dad? I'll bet you forgot Dad and I have theater tickets tonight. She's right. Plate of spaghetti uh, in the freezer and chocolate pudding in the fridge. Don't stay up too late playing video games. See you later, Mom. You can't see me now. <laughs> oh, man, what is wrong with me? Hello? Hey, Josh, this is Ouija. Yo, Ouija, what's up? Listen, I, uh, I was kind of being a baby this afternoon. You won the bet, and I shouldn't be mad at you. I'm sorry. That's OK. I was giving you a hard time. Tell you what. I'll only make you wear the nose to school for one day. I was kind of hoping you'd forget it completely. <laughs> You're dreaming, pal. Tomorrow's Zebo day for you. <laughs> Later. <laughs> one day's the best I'm gonna do. No way, Weege. You're not scaring me. It's a joke. He's trying to get me. I'll show him. I'm not scared. He can't scare me with kid stuff. There's no such thing as Zebo the Clown. No way. I'll just eat dinner and... Josh. Oh, how can that burn so fast? Oh. Cigar smoke. This is Josh. I'm, I'm... Josh, slow down. Tell me the truth. Did you call my house before and pretend you were Zebo? <laughs> Whoa, what's the matter, Josh? You sound kind of scared. I'm not. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm scared. I was scared on the ride, and I'm really scared now. Was that you? Give me a break. Why would I... What was that? Is that you, Cassie? Put down the phone. Josh, we only have one phone. It's gotta be at your house. If you don't give it back, I'll come up and get it. Who was that?
get it, I'm gone. It's the most fun in the park when you're laughing in the dark. <laughs> the end. So it was a crazy old guy all along. No way. He could have done that stuff in the house. Maybe the old guy was really Zebo's ghost. Yeah. So what do you think, Kristen? Is Zebo gonna pay you a visit tonight? I'm sorry, Kiki, I did it. Sat through the whole story and I'm okay. What do you say to that? I'd say that's a good thing because we wouldn't want you having nightmares. What way? <laughs> Being adjourned. I love it. Yeah, but I mean, what about tonight? It's almost lights out and we haven't had a full story yet. We shouldn't call a meeting without a full story, Eric. It's better than no story at all. Hey, and I don't see anyone else jumping in. I've got one. <laughs> Whoa, he speaks. Who woke you up? Leave him alone, Frank. You haven't told one in a long time, David. Yeah. I've been working on this one. It's ready. Excellent. Go for it, Dave. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story The Tale of the Twisted Claw. It was the night before Halloween, the night of tricks the night they call Mischief Night. Get the shaving cream. Yeah, real quiet.
Yes, it's mischief night. Yeah, but let's go someplace else. What's the matter? Afraid the witch is gonna get you? No such thing. Then let's do it. Kevin and Dougie were best friends, but Kevin was way more daring. He was always looking for adventure, and on that mischief night, he found it. What are you doing, dead mama? She might hear us. Sorry. <laughs> you finish your dinner? You can at least pretend. Grams used to pretend to be scared. Dougie, Kevin's here. Check out this costume. Ta-da! Cool mask. You're a bum. You're a bum every year. So you get the same candy. Come on, let's book. Be careful and don't go too far. I hear some of the candy's poisoned this year. <laughs> us and we have costumes on. Nobody goes to Miss Close's house. Yeah. We can tell everybody that we were the only ones brave enough to go to the witch's house on Halloween. Forget it, I'm out of here. Or I could say that you were too scared and I had to run home to mommy. Halloween, but no children ever stop by. Maybe they think the place is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see your costumes. Oh, nice. Very nice. We got a lot more has to go, ma'am. And tell you what, because you boys were the only children nice enough to come and see me on Halloween, I'm going to give you a special treat. Wait right here. See? There's nothing to be scared of. The vase. She didn't even clean it up. I've got something special for two very special boys. What is it? It's the claw of a vulture. Ew. Oh, it isn't real. It's made of wood. They say it's charmed, and whoever has it will get three wishes. 
Yeah? Hmm? Three wishes apiece or three for both of us? Kellyanne. Oh, I'm sure it means three wishes apiece. Thanks, lady, but I think we'll just take some candy and call it a night. A nonsense. You must take it. I won't take no for an answer. There you go. Just one thing. Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Careful what you wish for, you just might get it. Give me a break. That was really strange. Ah, uh, she's just a crazy old lady. Three wishes, right. Yeah? Well, I wish we can go home and lose this stupid trick-or-treating. Whoa! What's the matter? It moved. Dougie, it's a piece of old, junky wood. Like your head. Now, can we try and get some more candy? Did you see the way she was looking at us? Yeah. Maybe she was sizing up our brains for her magic suit. Yeah, right. Uh-oh. Some trick-or-treaters. You get some candy, boys? Candy's bad for you. Gives you cavities. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should give it to us. Forget it! Did I say you could talk, snot ball? So what you got? Forget it, I worked all night for that! You've been up, told Jammy. You ain't gonna live long enough to eat your stupid candy. <laughs> Trick-or-treating. I'm out of here. The punks gave Dougie his wish. No more trick-or-treats. Coincidence? Or was it the twisted claw? If you think it's bogus, why are you so nervous? Sorry, it gives me the creeps. Yeah? Well, it's gonna give me something I've wanted since I was a kid. Bostic? Field days this afternoon. And I wanna be Bostic in the 600. Forget it. Nobody beats Bostic. Until now. Someone's gotta shut him down. Oh, man, don't do it. I wish... I wish it could beat Bostic in the 600. Whoa! I told you, that thing's alive. Yeah, well, if it helps me beat Bostic this afternoon. I don't care if it jumps up and picks my nose. <laughs> let's go! Runners, take your mark! 600 finals! Come on, you guys, let's go! Let's go! Move! 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 He thinks he's so good. He is. Yeah, we'll see. Come on, Kevin! Runners, <whistles> take your positions, please! Let's go, you guys, come on! Move in, move in, move in. On the line, please. Let's go! Good luck, Kev. Well, let's do it. Yeah. You. Okay, you guys ready? Runners, take your marks! 
Jet set! Oh, it hurts my leg. Oh, my. It hurts. Tell Mr. White to get an ambulance. Can you relax, son. It's going to be all right. Help's coming. Is she okay? Well, having a broken leg, okay. Oh, it hurts. Oh, my. He, he tripped, right? It was an accident. This, these things happen, right? She didn't just trip. It was the dog. Where's the dog? used up one wish and something evil happened each time to make the wishes come true cool hey i'd wish for a million bucks and take my chances so what happened that night dougie's parents went out for dinner so kevin came over and he brought something with him the gold medal he won in the 600. bostick broke his leg you wished it to happen and it did it was an accident. Miss Clove said to be careful what we wish for, because we might get it. Dougie, get a grip. There's nothing magic going on here. Yeah? What about those guys that tried to beat us up? Where'd they come from? Oh, jeez. If Grants were here, he'd know what to do. Dougie, enough! What if my parents find out what happened to Miss Clove? So I'll be granted for life. They're not going to find out. It's over. I say we take this back to Miss Cloves and apologize. Then I can tell my folks we did the right thing. And forget it. No one is telling nobody nothing. But my folks. But my folks. But my folks. I wish you'd just lose your folks. Ah! It moved, didn't it? No. No, it, it just... You made a wish. No, I didn't. You wish I'd lose my folks. Yeah, but... Don't answer it. Hello? Is this Douglas Freeman? Yes. This is Lieutenant Crothers from the Cooper City Police. I have some bad news for you, son. Your parents have been in a car accident. They've been taken to the hospital, and I'm afraid... No! They... Who's that? Mom and Dad had an accident. They're in the hospital. It was the wish! No way! It was! You wished it! They wish for them to be okay! Yeah! No! Every time we make a wish, something bad happens. Then do something! I wish Grants were here. He'd know what to do. Ah! Dougie, your grandfather's dead. You don't think.
James's car. It's him. No! I don't want to meet no ghost. We gotta wish it away. No! Where is it? Don't I do wish! It. The wish are bad! Dougie! He's dead! He may be a skeleton or run! <laughs> No, I'm gonna make the wish we should've made from the start. We're sorry we broke Miss Chloe's vase, and we wish it never, ever happened. Whoa. Don't answer it. I got it. keys. Again. If I didn't take them, they wouldn't get taken. Hi, kid. So, you guys are okay? Nothing happened? He only went over to the Morrisons. Oh, apart from that maniac truck driver that almost sideswiped us. Oh, it wasn't that dramatic. Whoa, what's this for? I'm just glad to see you. <laughs> We're glad to see you, too. Hang out, guys. I say we raid the fridge for some ice cream. just like he was supposed to, and there never was a ghost car, and those tough guys never chased us. What do you mean? I mean, I finally made the right wish. None of it ever happened. Are you sure the car was gone? What does it say? It says trick or treat. All they could hear was the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. Or was it the cackle of a sly witch? Declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. Until next time, pleasant dreams, everyone. What was that? What? I thought I heard something. Like an animal or something. Nobody here but us? 
chickens. Very funny. <laughs> Here, let me do it. I can do it. Give me the matches. Where's Kristen? She'll be here. Don't get your shorts in a knot. Yeah, after the work is all done, she wouldn't want to break her fingernails. Ouch! We're gonna have to make a rule about latecomers. What was that? Sounded like a hound dog. Maybe it was Kristen. <laughs> She's no dog. Elvis. And who's Elvis? He ain't nothing but a hound dog. My dad says Elvis is king. So, Christian, are you gonna tell us a story or are you just gonna sit there scaring us with Elvis? I have a tale that'll have you shaking in your little hoonas. Elvis is here for the sound effects. Ooh. I'll need some help with the dust, Dave. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. Call this story The Tale of the Hungry Hounds. On rainy days, Pam liked to rummage around in her musty old attic. Her mother never threw anything away. There was stuff from Pam's grandparents, from relatives, and ancestors who'd been dead for years. One summer, Pam's cousin Amy was visiting from the city. Amy, come here. Look at this. Isn't this great? Grandpa wore this on his, at his wedding. Just think, my mother and your father were just a twinkle in his eye. But I guess Aunt Dora came first. Amy. Come here, look at this. Amy, where are you? Amy? Hello, Charles. Who's Charles? Guests are arriving, dear. It's nearly time for the wedding. This isn't funny. <laughs> oh, give me a break. You don't really believe in ghosts, do you? There are more things on heaven and earth that you could ever dream of. Says who? Hamlet. His father's ghost made him do things that he didn't want to do. Like what? Like kill his uncle for marrying his mother. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Glad we're not in that family. I don't believe in ghosts anyways. What's this? I didn't know you could ride. I can't. Mom won't let me. This is Aunt Dora, and that's her horse, Mirage. She sure looked like you. Let's go. No, no, no. It's coming from in there. Oh, come on, help me. Oh. Look, there's a name. Dora Pease, 1963. Come on, this is too creepy. It's probably just a mouse. No, we shouldn't touch it. Mom says let the dead rest in peace. Look, there's a the little mouse hole. <clears throat> hey in there. Tell us the combination and we'll let you free. Pam, Amy, come on down now. It's time to feed the dog. Let's go. believe that I have to spend my entire summer here. What do you do for fun anyways?
promise you won't tell. Let's go. His owners live in the city. They only come here on weekends, though. Does it bite? Nah, he's just a big baby. Watch. Come here. Ah, oh, good boy. So he's like a big dog. So what? Watch this. It wouldn't be dangerous if I knew how to ride. Can't I just take some lessons? No. And I wish you wouldn't bring the subject up again. It's dinner time. Let's go home. But it's safe in a ring. I don't want to discuss it. Well, then it happened 30 years ago. Seems like yesterday to me. I think you better give it a rest. work with just one person. This is feeble. Don't you do anything around here except play games? What are we gonna do next, Jethro? Shuck some corn? Come on, humor me. I found it in the attic. The spirits are supposed to give us messages from the other world. Hmm, maybe they can tell us where to get a pizza. <sighs> Amy. I'm sorry. Let's visit the far side. Mom mm. said that she and Aunt Dora used to do this when they were kids. You're doing this, right? No. L. E. T. M. E. O. U. T. Late now. No. It's spelled let me out. Let me out? Maybe it's that rodent calling from Aunt Dora's box. One, four, nine. What if it works? We're just gonna open it up and take a look. What's the big deal? Yeah, but you saw how upset my mom got it. It's like she's haunted by her sister. If she catches it, it Look, if they can fit through that mouse hole, it's not big enough to hurt us. Yeah, but what if it's something else? Like what? Now, what were those numbers? One, four, nine. Look, I'm telling you, this isn't gonna work, and I, I, I don't even believe in this stuff. Then you shouldn't be scared. Cousin, what are you scared of? <clears throat> oh, cool, it's all her riding stuff. It's all covered with dirt and grass, yeah. Looks like they never washed it after the last time she wore it.
have to feed the dog or something? Okay. Ah, good job. You've totally creeped me. Okay. I deserve it. I've been a pain now. Let's go back. It's all our family for a hundred years. As you are, so was I. As I am, so will you be. <sighs> nice thought. Aunt Dora's grave. Why did you bring me here? What is that? A bone? Mon petit rouge. What? Mon petit rouge. What is happening to you? It's a gift from the fox. He leaves me presents. Very nice. Now, let's go. I call it Mon Petit Rouge, my little red one. I fed him each day. He looked at me through the cage with his little golden eyes. I know. Let's travel back to Earth now, okay? I didn't want the hounds to tear him apart. But they were ravenous and howling for the hunt. The day of the hunt, I got up before dawn to see Mon Petit Rouge. He was shivering in his cage. I opened the door, and I let him run free in the barn. Could hear him and they could smell him. They were going crazy. I know the feeling. I opened the barn door and he seemed to smile at me. And then he ran away. The hounds were furious. I wanted to ride after him before the hunters came. So I saddled up Mirage and we raced over the hills. Then something startled him, and he shied before a jump. A and he tripped, and we fell together. Pam, your imagination is running away with you. You are Pam, you're not Dora. Hello, Dora. Wondering when you'd get around to your chores. I've come to feed the hounds. You should have fed them while they were alive. I couldn't get back until now. I was all torn up when you died. Oh, my little Dora. She is not Dora. When I found them, they were nearly starved. They leapt at me. I couldn't keep them down. I, I got away, but, but my heart... My heart! I'm sorry, Giles. Why didn't you feed the hounds? The fire run!
my thing. What was happening to you back there? Who was that guy? Giles was the stable keeper. What's the matter, Elvis? Smell a fox? Maybe he's scared. Maybe he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Who locked the girls in the barn? It might have been Giles. Or it might have been another ghost from the family graveyard. There's got to be another way out of here. I have to feed the hounds. Oh, don't get strange on me again, please. They're trapped in there. Starved and it's all my fault. You listen to me. You are not Dora. You're Pam. It's not your fault, and it wasn't her fault either. It's that jacket. Take off the jacket! Dora, listen to me. We're your nieces. You're inside Pam's body. Nonsense. I have no nieces. My brother and my sister are ten years old. Now I've got to feed those hounds. They're starved before a hunt, you know. What if they attack us? They must be fed. Pam! Dora! Don't open that door! Let me go. I have to feed the hounds. Not until you let Pam back into her own body. Forget it. I'm going for help. No! I don't know the way. I'll show you if you let me feed the hounds. What are you gonna feed them? Me? Kibble. Now let me out and I'll get it. No way. Tell me where it is. If you don't tell me, we're both dog meat. Over there by the ladder.
am I gonna tell Aunt Beth? Tell her about what? Him! Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just my allergies and all this dust. Let's go downstairs. This place is haunted. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. Come on, I gotta go feed the dogs. What dogs? You only have one. That's what I said. I have to feed the dog. You said dogs. You said I have to feed the dogs. Did not. You did too. Did not. Did too. Who cares what I said? What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. I'm fine. I'm okay. Okay. Rexy's hungry and I'm gonna go feed him now. After that, Pam tried one more time to convince her mother to let her take riding lessons. And it finally worked, because her mom was no longer haunted by her sister Dora. And Dora's ghost was no longer tormented by the howling of the hungry hound. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. And don't forget to feed your dog, or he may have a bone to pick with you. Still not here? Like you're surprised? She's always late. It's the makeup. It's always the makeup. If she's not beautiful, she stays home. She'll be here. She's got a great story. Yeah, well, we have rules. And if she's always going to be. Whoa! <laughs> Who are you? I've come to tell you a story. <sighs> Excellent, Chris. It is time to begin my tale. So what's the get up? Sit down, you geek. I'm doing this for effect. I'm sorry. My tale is one of woe. It has been told around many campfires. But I am here to tell the one true version. First, I will need some help with the midnight dust. I got it. <clears throat> Go for it. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story the Tale of the Prom Queen. the grave holding a bouquet of wildflowers as if taking a moment for silent prayer.
We're not ghosts. Relax. <laughs> then again, maybe we are. Ever seen Night of the Living Dead? <laughs> oh, back off, Jam. You guys always hang around graveyards and scare people? Hey, we're just having a goof. I'm Greg. This is Jam. We didn't mean to scare you. Sure we did. No harm done, right? Uh, what's your name? Dee Dee. What are you doing here by yourself? Bringing flowers to a grave. Or maybe looking for ghosts. Like us? What's the matter? Can't wait for Halloween. Forget Halloween, my dear. Saturday night's prom night. The night of the prom queen. Prom queen? You don't know the story of the prom queen? Uh, no. Well, don't you live around here? I used to. Uh, I'm just visiting. Oh, well, it's an old story. They say that... Oh, let me tell it. I tell it best. It happened a long time ago. On prom night. A girl was waiting here by the gates for a date to pick her up. She was all set to go, wearing her prom dress and everything. But it was a foggy night. Tule fog. The kind where you can't see cars coming till it's too late. So there she was, waiting in the fog, when a car came ripping around the corner. Some say that the driver was bombed. As he took the turn too wide, he bounced over the curb, and he hit her. It's back! And the slime just drove off. Didn't even realize what he'd done. They found her the next morning. And a couple of days later, they buried her in her prom dress. That's awful. That's not the best part. It gets better. Oh, yeah. Every year on prom night, the ghost of the girl comes back. People have seen her by the gates, still waiting for the ride that never comes. And we're going to see if it's true. Really? We've been looking for a grave that might be hers. Kind of juvenile, huh? I don't know. Sounds kind of cool. You want to help? It's a big cemetery. Come on. Greg thinks you're a babe. Oh, what's wrong with you? Sure. Why not? Sounds kind of creepy. Excellent. Let's go ghost hunting, boys and ghouls. <laughs> so we didn't find a grave. So what? Are you gonna finish that? Mm. All I'm saying is I want to find out if there really was a car accident. This whole thing could be a waste. Do, do you want the rest? Oh, I'm not hungry. Maybe we should go to the police. They got to keep a record of accidents. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, excuse me, officer. We're doing a little bit of ghost hunting. Could we look through all your files for the last 100 years? Get real. Well, we could check newspapers. Newspapers? Yeah. If it really happened, there would have been an obituary or a story on the accident. Excellent. <laughs> they went to the town library to scan old newspapers on microfilm. They started back in 1950 and worked forward, searching for any article on a young girl in a fatal car accident. And they found it in 1956. Well, stop. Read that. This is so neat. I've never seen one of these. The girl killed by hit and run on prom night. That's it. <gasps> it happened just like you said. Fog and all. I love it. What's it say? Uh, local girl 
night of May 7th, 1956. Her name was Judy Larson. It really happened. Cool. It says she was waiting for her boyfriend, Ricky Mitchell, to pick her up, but Ricky's mother said that he never got the message. Oh, no. When Ricky heard what happened, he got so upset that he drove his car, a 1955 Chevy, off the Mianus River Bridge. He died too? They say it was an accident. And they never found him or the car. Excellent. Two gruesome deaths for the price of... What was that? Uh, you're just getting spooked by... Children like some tea. <laughs> Good comeback. No. And you were scared to death. Oh, like you weren't? Hey, I was cool. Yeah, sure. If you guys get so scared over an old lady, what's gonna happen when we see the ghost? This is getting so old. No, it's not. It's just getting good. I say we help Judy. Help a ghost? Well, yeah, according to legend, Judy's ghost shows up every prom night waiting for a ride that never comes, right? Yeah, so? So? We just read that Ricky never picked her up because he didn't know he was supposed to. Judy, I'm here! Where's little Ricky? Shut up, Jam. What are you saying? I'm saying we try to contact Ricky's spirit and tell him to pick her up. Yeah, like a seance. Cool, this is getting better all the time. Guys, you're going way too far on this. There's really no such thing as ghosts. My parents go to the movies on Fridays. We'll use my house. No. There's only one place to have it. Where? Maybe me back here tonight and I'll show you. Oh, a mystery. Who knows what will happen when the lights go down? We'll be here, my dear. You don't really believe all this stuff, do you? I don't know. It's kind of fun, though. What do you say? I say that you're kind of a strange person. But I like that. Keen? Keen? <laughs> That's where Ricky went over. And they never found the car? Yuck. Psych. Let's go to the marina. Why can't we just do this right here? Because this isn't where it happened. something? No, I think we just have to concentrate. Let's hold hands. I can't believe we're doing this. Close your eyes. Clear your minds. Try to imagine Ricky. Think of his picture in the newspaper. To contact Ricky's spirit, we have to picture him. Think of what happened that night. Try to picture an old 55 Chevy. See it driving onto the bridge. Ricky's behind the wheel, and he's very upset because of Judy. Hey, you're pretty good at this. Shh. Concentrate. Imagine Ricky driving. He's very upset. He's driving too fast. He turns onto the bridge, but at the last second, the car swerves. It skids, and the Chevy crashes through the railing falls, and it falls, and it hits the river right here. Now picture the car sitting on the bottom of the river, filled with water for years and years. Ricky's inside. What was that? Concentrate. Don't open your eyes. 
keep picturing the car sitting there underwater. Ricky's grave. We're trying to contact the spirit of Ricky Mitchell. Ricky Mitchell. Do you hear us, Ricky? What was that? Bubbles from fish? Or a rusty Chevy. If you can hear us, Ricky, we've got a message for you. On the night of the accident, you were supposed to pick up Judy by the cemetery on Weaver Street. She's still waiting for you. She wants you to pick her up. This is stupid. Maybe he ran out of gas. That wasn't what we thought it was, was it? No. It could have been a leaky water main. It could have been a switch pipe. It could have been some kind of natural gas pockets. Or a ghost taking an evening spin. No. I don't know what it was, but it was no ghost. How do you know? Because there are no ghosts. Ghosts aren't real. Well, there's <coughs> one way to know for sure. How? Tomorrow night, the graveyard, prom night. Be there if you dare. Brave kids. Stupid, but brave. The next day, they check the cemetery records found the name, Judy Larson. The grave they were looking for. Yes, the grave. There she is. Do we wait here or what? Maybe we should split up. No way. We're staying together. Well, let's wait down there. We can see the road to the gate and the grave from there. OK. You don't really believe all this stuff, do you? I mean, you're just doing this for a goof, right? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Does the legend say when she's coming? It's getting cold. Midnight. It's always midnight. Do you guys feel as stupid as I do? Wait. Do you hear that? What's that? It's wind chimes. That could be anything. That could be the wind through the trees. That could be something on a grave. That could be anything. Or the ghost. Huh? Look. No way. It's her. Oh, man, it's her. Greg, don't. No way, man. I'm not buying this. You're crazy, don't do it. I gotta see. Boo. Who are you? It was Jan. 
Jam's idea. He made me do it. <laughs> Jam? <laughs> gotcha. It was awesome. I thought you were gonna have a cow. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you. Chuck, guys. Guys, my cousin Chuck. Hi. Check this. Pretty spooky, huh? <laughs> Ooh, ghostly green. Ooh. <laughs> You're a dead man. Come on, guys. It was just a goof. There aren't any real ghosts. But last night... Give me a break. You really think there was a ghost car driving underwater? Hello, anybody up there? <laughs> You're losing teeth. Come on, Greg. It was a goof. Greg! What? Look! What's that? I don't know, I swear. Maybe he's not so crazy after all. It's a car. The caretaker, let's jam. No. Listen. Greg, I swear I don't know who it is. It's not Chevy. from the moment I saw you. You see, I couldn't leave the cemetery unless someone brought me with them. And then you solved the mystery of why Ricky never picked me up and got him to come. finally here. Dee Dee? Oh, Dee Dee's my nickname. My real name's Judy. Thanks, guys. I'll never forget you. I declare this meeting in the Midnight Society closed. Until next time, pleasant dreams, everyone. Okay, Eric, born April 28th. That means you're exactly 5,450 days, 17 hours, 15 minutes, and 37 seconds old. So, what have you been doing all this time? Waiting for Kiki. Where'd she go? <laughs> Must be nature calling. What the? Hey, it's a flasher. <laughs> gotcha. Ew, gross, my eyes are all red. I look 5,000 years old, not 5,000 days. What you see is what you get, old man. It's like a ghost becoming real. Well, when's your birthday, Kiki? Can we just get to the story? Yeah, come on. Come on, guys, let's go. Okay, give me the pictures. Sometimes a camera sees more than the naked eye. Some Indian tribes hated to have their pictures taken because they thought the camera captured your soul. 
And maybe they were right. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story The Tale of the Captured Souls. The ad in the travel magazine said, it's the perfect hotel to spend a relaxing summer vacation on a crystal clear lake. Join us for a visit you'll never forget. But Danielle and her parents thought the place sounded too good to be true. But the ad was right. This was going to be a vacation they were never, ever going to forget. What a charming place. It looks boring. Should have gone to the ocean. Oh, what's the matter? You're getting too old to have fun with us all of a sudden? No. All right, then let's do it. All right. It's locked. Oh, well, check over the door. Maybe there's a key. Must be the Selmans. I'm Peter Curlin, the third. It's wonderful to have you here. Yeah, uh, thanks. Mrs. Selman. Very nice to meet you, Peter. Are your parents the innkeepers here? And this must be your lovely daughter, Danielle. Uh, yeah, Danny. Let me show you your rooms. I think you'll find them very cozy. This is beautiful. Thank you. Gross. You're in luck. We have no other guests this week. You have the place to yourselves. This is your room, Mr. and Mrs. Salmon. I hope it's to your liking. Oh, wow. What's with all the mirrors? My family's been collecting them for years. It's kind of a tradition. They sure do like to look at themselves. I kind of like them. <laughs> Ouch! Sorry about that. The wiring is quite old. In the mirror? Let me show you your room, Danielle. Don't call me Danielle. I hate that. What do you think? This is a closet, not a room. Danny, don't be rude. I think you'll be very happy here. Are your parents around? I guess we should be checking in. Oh, they're not here. Actually, they're off on a cruise. I'll check you in. You're here all alone? Not anymore. A strange little guy. Totally weird. Go for it. You've got quite an arm there, Danielle. Thanks. Don't call me Danielle. Come on, Pete, get in the game. I'm not much of a sportsman. Come on, pick up a glove. All right, here goes. Oops. Dad. I thought this was supposed to be our vacation gather. Forget this geek. Oh, come on, sweetie. Give him a break. He's all alone. Besides, it'll be fun having somebody else to play ball with. Here you are.
Well, maybe not. Okay. Smile, everybody. No! Pete! You okay? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let me take a picture of you all. Go stand with your family. What do you think of my room? You live here all summer? By yourself? Possibly longer. No parents? I do what I want, when I want. It's like a dream come true. Cool. What do you do for fun? What do you want to do? I always admire a girl with great physical strength. Is this you? No, wait. It says 1920. It's my grandfather. He looked a lot like me. What's this? It's an experiment. My grandfather designed it years ago. It's a transference of energy fields. But you're killing the roses. The geraniums are doing very well. It's natural selection with a little help. Don't! Don't ruin it! Hey, okay, sorry. What are you doing? Nothing, really. What? Don't be such a dweeb. Well, it's just, well, I think you're breaking out.
Anyway, taking a light shower? Yeah, and why didn't he want his picture taken? Maybe he was afraid of what they'd see. But what about the cylinder? There are mirrors in there. Exactly, mirrors. Just like in the rest of the house. Steer right three. You're out. Yeah, you lucked up with that curveball. You're out. I'm up. I'll pitch. Hey, slugger, try this one. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice hit, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> he got lucky. I gotta quit. I'm feeling a little woozy. It must be the heat. Well, we just started. I'm sorry, hon. But I really am beat. You go get the ball, okay? Wait, I'll get it. Don't worry about it. No, I said I'll get it. Let's go swimming. Look, honey, I'm too tired. Your father will take you. He can barely play softball. He's not going to want to swim. Go easy on him, Danny. It's his vacation, too. Great. Okay. You know, I, th I think we're going to have to get some medication for your skin. the old wiring. In a mirror. What happened here? Get this cleaned up before somebody gets hurt. I'm gonna take a nap. still be alive. What's that? What, what are you doing? There's something really weird going on here, Mom. You look terrible. No! Don't look in the mirror. Oh, I know I look terrible. I guess it is. It's just catching up with me. We gotta leave right now. Yeah, Danny, your imagination is running away with you. But you've gotten old in a couple of days. What are you doing? No, don't put it back. Danny, don't be strange. Can't we just go home? Ooh, this country is getting me lightheaded. Then let's get out of here. 
think I'll take a nap too. I'm as weak as a kitten. Out here really is wonderful. I just find it takes so much out of you sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. Is that a new guest? Uh, what do you mean? <sighs> Some tea, Danielle. kids, ten dogs. So, you found our little plot. Who are you? What are you doing to us? You were right. It's all done with mirrors, which you have cleverly managed to avoid. After tonight, you'll be all alone, just like me. You can stay on in the house if you'd like. We can be friends. What do you mean I'll be all alone? Your parents are checking out tonight. What? Oh, yes. We've entered the final phase. It won't be long now. You leave my parents alone. Stay with me, Danielle. We can be young. Forever. You're crazy. No. I'm very, very smart. But if you won't join me, I'll have to use you, too. Ah! It's too late! You don't have any time! souls so you can stay young. How old are you? 80? 90? Don't be foolish, Danielle. I'm offering you eternal youth. You're a twisted old man. I'm a scientist. You're a monster. Please, Danielle, don't do anything. You don't understand. Oh, I understand, all right. I'm trying to take my parents away from me. Well, you messed with the wrong girl, Petey boy. Danielle, no! And don't call me Danielle. No! 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 Mom, Dad, wake up! 
up. We gotta get out of here. I feel like I've dropped a million years. You all right, honey? Where have you been? I stopped him. You stopped too. Peter, I was up in the. Never mind. Well, I feel great. What do we do? How about a trip? Hmm. Where to? Anywhere. That is a long way from here. Honey. Peter? Goodbye, Danny. I'm going out back now to join my family. It's been far too long. Enjoy your youth while you can. Danny, who was that? Nobody. I just found this out front. Any idea who it is? No. Just looks like some sad old man. Danny never told her parents a true story about Peter. Okay, let's go. They were safe, and Peter wasn't going to hurt anybody again. That's all that mattered. And she finally convinced her parents to go to the ocean. So you see, sometimes pictures do tell the truth, whether you like it or not. And I've got one shot left. Everybody. Why do we always tell scary stories at night? I mean, if they're scary, they should be just as scary during the day, right? No way. Things are always scarier at night. Yeah, but why? Because you can't see things at night. Yeah, like some ghoul could sneak up on you in the dark and you wouldn't know until it was too late. <laughs> yeah. So who's going tonight? I am. Oh, man. What's the matter? You always tell the same kind of story. It's kind of gross, but everyone always lives happily ever after. Boring. So what's your problem? You're kind of gross and boring, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things are scarier at night, especially in my story. You can be scared during the day, but don't bother, because the real terror never begins until night falls. <laughs> Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, except for Eric, I call this story Tale of the Nightly Neighbors. TV all day and you're gonna turn into dad. Great. If that happens, I'll send you to your room. Forever. You're a zero. You'll always be a zero. You won't catch me sitting around like some toad. There's a ton going on in the world, Day Day, and I'm not gonna miss any of it. Hey, new neighbors moving in. At night? What's with the black clothes? I think they look cool. Maybe they're artists, or foreign diplomats. Or maybe they got dressed in the dark. I don't know they look stupid. Whoever they are, they don't fit this boring neighborhood. Whoa! Tell me that wasn't creepy. I think I'm going to avoid our new neighbors.
Need a hand? I need a new back. What's in the box? Whatever it is, they got two of them. You know these people? No, nah, they just moved in Friday night. We're coming over to say hi. What's their name? Um, Braun, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Look at this. Rob, no Ukraine. They're from the Ukraine. Is that near Disney World? No dip, it's near Russia. I knew that. Must have wanted these refrigerators pretty bad if they ordered them when they were still in Russia. That's what they are? Refrigerators? Mm -hmm. You're just gonna leave them? Yep, that's what the order says. Nobody home? Leave them in the driveway. See ya. Come on. That's weird. What? Their car's here. They gotta be home. Why didn't they answer the door? What if they're KGB agents who had to bolt when the Soviet Union crumbled? Or gypsies searching for a new home? Oh, get real. Hi, Mom. I'm late. Um, don't forget to tell your father about... Oh! I'm, I'm sorry. I'm late. Bye. Sorry, Mr. Mitchell. Mom's in a rush. She's a little crazy. Uh, it's okay. <sighs> I know the feeling. <laughs> You okay? Uh, yeah. I just got a touch of something. I'm as weak as a kitten. Well, mail must go through. Uh, have you met the new neighbors yet? Oh, yeah. They stopped by my house the other night just to get acquainted. That's the night I'll never forget. Why? Were they strange or something? No. It's the night I started getting sick. I hope I can shake it off. Emma started paying close attention to the bronze. She watched them every chance she got. And the more she watched, the more she realized the new neighbors were just a little bit strange. They didn't talk to anyone, and no one ever saw them during the day, only at night. Even their kid Lex was never seen during the day. Lex never started school. No one had even heard of him. And the strange disease that hit Mr. Mitchell was spreading through the neighborhood like crazy. People were losing their energy. It was like an epidemic going around, but no one knew what it was. And it started the same night the bronze moved in. Things seemed very strange indeed. Emma had a great imagination. But this was a little weird, even for her. Then one night, all the pieces of the puzzle came together. wrong with the bronze me too they have a crazy neighbor you listen why is it they're never out during the day and where are they from here rovno ukraine that's right in the middle of all those ea places romania bulgaria transylvania 
And uh, what about those people? They're all getting sick, weak and pale, and they'll have band-aids on their necks. There's only one explanation. What? Our neighbors are vampires. Ugh, oh, I'm dreaming. No, you're not. They're vampires, all right. They gotta be. There's no such thing as vampires. Now go away! Remember those big crates that guy delivered? I think I know what was in them. Me too. Refrigerators. Oh, I'll bet it was their coffins. And I'm gonna check tonight. I'm gonna wait till they leave, then get into their basement. I find refrigerators and I'm a jerk and you can bust on me all you want. But if I'm right and I find coffins, then our neighbors are vampires and we are in big time trouble. She's going into a vampire's basement at night? Adios, Emma. But they might not be vampires. <laughs> then why are all those people getting sick? Yeah, like blood was being sucked from their necks. I love it. What happened? Emma didn't know for sure if they were vampires, so she had to investigate. And that night, she did. Oh. What are you doing? Vampires don't like garlic. Neither do I. Maybe I'm a vampire. We're safe as long as you remember one thing. A vampire can't come into someone's home unless it's been invited. So never, ever invite the bronze inside. Got it? Yeah. I'll try and remember that. Good. You're not really going into the basement, are you? What if you get caught? I won't. Don't worry, look. They leave the same time every night. Probably in search of their next victim. Might we come in? Uh, sh sure. Come on in. No, wait. Um, uh, my dad's not home, and uh, maybe she'll come back another time. Bye. Uh, who's there, Daddy? And uh, nobody. Wrong house. Oh, hello. You're from next door. Well, come in. Come in. I'm sorry my husband isn't here. He works late. Ah, oh, we know what that's like, eh? We both work evenings. It's been hard on poor legs. He hasn't been well since we moved here. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What is it you do for work? We've been studying your emergency health care services. Paramedics, you call it. We ride with ambulances to study different techniques we can bring back to our country. It's absolutely fascinating work, although sometimes a bit, um, bloody.
It's a refrigerator. Daddy's never gonna let me forget this. Why would they lock a refrigerator? If I can crack them at school, I can crack them here. You've been most gracious, Mrs. Toll, but we only came to introduce ourselves and we must get Lex home. Well, I'm so glad we finally met. Please, drop by any time. No, I mean, don't leave yet. You just got here. I'm afraid Lex needs to rest. But we can play video games. It'll be great, right, Lex? Maybe not. <laughs> it's getting late, Day Day. Don't worry, Day Day. Now that we've been invited, I promise you we'll be back. They're vampires, all right. And you invited them in. Did not. Mom did. Doesn't matter. I think they found their next victims. Who? Us? They were invited in, remember? We gotta tell somebody. Mom and Dad. Or the police. They'll never believe us. We're the only ones who know, and we're the only ones who can stop them. Yeah, how? Tomorrow after school. Before it's dark, we gotta get them before they get us. Here, put this on. What's in it? Wooden spikes. We have to find the coffins and drive the wooden spikes through their hearts. Uh-uh. This is too gross for me. Here. Wear this, just in case. Forget it. I'm not going. Day Day, if we don't stop them today, they may come for us tonight. Open it. Here, hold 
Hold it still. Oh, I'm scared, Em. Me too, but get a grip. That. I don't know, let's pull. De de sister Emma. Hmm. I thought you worked at night. We did, but the schedule changed. Thank goodness. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> What's that? It's blood from the hospital. They have a surplus, and we've been storing the extra units here for them. Day Day, Lex is still not feeling very well. We thought having a friend might help. Would it be all right if he came over to your house to play video games with you tonight? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, wonderful. Maybe we'll see you later, too, hmm? Nice to meet you, Emma. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> they work in a hospital. That's why they have blood. And how was I supposed to know that? We better get them before they get us, Day Day. Ooh, I'm so scared. All right, I made a mistake. I'm never gonna let you forget this. Oh, give me a break. You're a loser. You're a big loser. They were in here, weren't they? I'm afraid so. No matter. Tonight's the night. <laughs> Wake up, Master. The sun is gone. You'll feel better soon, Master. You've been invited in by new victims. <sighs> you are wise in coming to this country. There is so much more fresh blood here. And no one believes that a little boy can be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> With ghosts and ghouls, there are no rules. But a vampire's bite only comes at night. The end. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed.
Until next time. Pleasant dreams, everyone. Where were you? It's okay, Frank. We're waiting for you. We were supposed to come together? Oh, yeah. Forgot. Sorry. For forgot? Great. You know, thanks a lot. Hey, be careful with that man. It's my father's. I gotta make you eat this. What's the big deal? Well, you see... All right. Just forget it. Poor Frankie lost his flashlight. <sighs> Let it go, Eric. And, and what? And he's afraid of the dark. What? Not Mr. Tough Stuff. It's okay. I get scared in the dark sometimes, too. I'm not afraid of the dark. I just wasn't sure I could find the clearing without a flashlight. You're gonna pay for this, man! Well, don't kill him yet. He's telling the story tonight. Yeah, and it's a good one. There's a little boy in it who's afraid of the dark. Oh, you're dead meat. Sit down, Frank. Don't be strange. No, I'll stand. Just tell the story. Well, everyone knows that there's nothing in the dark that can hurt you. Most of the time. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story... The Tale of the Dark Music. Andy Carr wasn't doing so hot. His folks got divorced and his mom wasn't making much money. He tried to help her as best he could, like with his paper route. It gave him money to buy lunch at school. Things were pretty tough. Then one day, it looked like his luck changed. His mom inherited a big old house from some uncle she could hardly remember. Just like that. Didn't cost her a dime. It was kind of old, but a lot better than the puny apartment they lived in. It really looked like the car's luck was changing. Except there are two kinds of luck, and you don't always get the kind you want. Hey! You mess with me, kid, and I'll deck you. What? Look, everybody was glad when your nutbag uncle kicked, then you had to show up. Hey, I never even met the guy! You're his family, it's the same thing. If you get in my face again, you're history. Who are you? I'm your new neighbor. Welcome to the neighborhood. Oh, I hate these things. They're so stupid. Mom? Yeah? What was Uncle Niles like? I don't remember. Last time I saw him, I was Christina's age. This is useless. Do me a favor, go down in the basement and see if he had a ladder. The basement? Yeah, there's a bunch of junk down there. Uh, I don't know. What's the matter, Andy? Afraid of the dark? No, I'm not afraid of the dark. Be careful down there, it's a real mess.
Somebody hit the wall switch up there? I need some power. Do it yourself. How's that? Good, thanks. I heard that. <sighs> Who's there? Hello, Andy. Come on in. Man in the basement. I love it. Uncle Nas may be dead, but he's not forgotten. Ooh. Mm, yeah. Mm. You okay, Frank? Frank? Where'd he go? I didn't see him leave. He couldn't take it. I told you he was chicken. Keep going. He'll come back. So anyway, Andy freaked and ran off to get his mom. Because his worst nightmares were coming true. It was in there. It talked to me. It said, come in and I'll suck your blood or something like that. Get lost. Get back upstairs. Now. Oh. It, it was probably a rat or something. Rats don't talk. Good. I hate rats. <laughs> Andy. Honey, come over here. It's the root cellar. <laughs> I swear, Mom, there was something in here. Well, maybe it was a rat. <laughs> or the leaky old plumbing. <laughs> this house is falling apart. What's this? Oh, I was playing with this old radio and... <laughs> well, there's your boogeyman. It must have been something on the radio. I don't know. Oh, honey, I know it's been tough. But I really need you to be strong for me right now, okay? Okay. Ugh, that's my guy. Let's get something to eat before Christina gets it all. You want an allowance? You earn it. Yeah, yeah. What's the matter? 
there. I thought you were afraid of me, Dad. What are you doing down here? Playing? Boy, you're such a wess. Don't come down here alone anymore. Yeah, the boogeyman might get me. And now, the fireplace. Mom? Yeah? Who was Uncle Niles? Like, what did he do? Oh, he was a strange guy. He never left the house, but somehow got filthy rich. Nobody knows where the money came from. <laughs> from what I hear, the neighbors didn't like him too much. I thought he was kind of loony. How did he die? He was old. Just stopped living. I found him in the basement at the bottom. <laughs> Let's change the subject. Chris, go down and put the clothes in the laundry for me, okay? Christina? Mom, I'm busy. <sighs> oh, Mom. I'm filthy. Please? Remember, there's nothing down there. What? Are you okay? Yeah, sure. Andy was like hypnotized. He didn't remember anything that happened, which means he didn't know enough to never go down in the basement again. Hi, honey. I'll be at the store till five. Do me a favor and throw these tarps in the wash. Surprises in here. 
Stop now, son. You're almost... What's the matter, Andy? Don't you want to have some fun? <laughs> oh, yeah! This is gonna be the show! Music. It's music. I got his home mom. Stay for a ride, isn't it? Stop! I gotta go find my mom! Your mom's not gonna help you now, kid. Get used to it, kid. I'm gonna beat on you for the rest of your life. Don't! Don't! <laughs> Now you've got to deliver your stupid papers by foot. And you'll never get away from me. Howdy, neighbor. When you're done, come over and clean my house. You make a good maid. You're dead. Kid, you are toast. What's the matter, Coda? You're not afraid of the dark, are you? I'm gonna kick your butt, Car, I swear! I don't know. I think your butt-kicking days are over. Coda? Had enough? You mess with me, I'll do this to you again.
it's yours, Andy. I'll give you anything you want. Just like I did for your uncle. Who are you? Anything you want. You only have to do one thing. What's that? Feed me, feed me. sister to the thing, did he? No, but he made sure that she didn't bother him anymore. Cool. I'd have done it. Little brat deserved it. Great story, Eric. Well, it's getting late. We gotta go. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. with my father's flashlight. I gotta take that thing home. So wait for him. He'll be back. Wait? Here alone? Why can't you wait with me? Kristen, what's the matter, Eric? Afraid of the dark? Uh, hey, no problem. I'll wait. I am not afraid of the dark. Not afraid of the dark. are sweet. <laughs> I guess everybody knows that Frank was supposed to tell tonight's story, but we have an unusual situation and he's agreed to pass the bag to Eric. Eric? My grandfather died this week. He was from Ireland, and he'd, he used to tell these neat stories from Era. He'd act out all the different parts, and he used a new voice for each character. Uh, before he died, he gave me his hat. He said, Eric Malad, guard it well. It's blessed with the power of the pixies. What's a pixie? Well, they were what Papa used to call fairies. He said, lad, if they always acted fair, I'd call them fairies. Papa was our kind of guy. He'd only tell stories about the evil ones. And he had this great one about Kelpie, a kind of water horse that invited little kids to hop on its back so he could swim out into the ocean and eat them. But I think that Papa's favorite pixies were the leprechauns. That's where he said he got his hat. What is a leprechaun? Well, they're kind of like little old men, and they make shoes. And they dress all in green, and they wear strange little hats like this one. How'd your grandfather get the hat? Well, he said he got it in a trade. If a person offers a pixie a trade, they can't refuse no matter how bad a deal it is. All you have to do is say, mine be yours, and yours be mine. Anyway, this was one of Popov's favorite stories, so I'm gonna try to tell it the way he did. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story The Tale of Jake and the Leprechaun. Screaming lad, or I'll eat up your liver. <laughs> now, why would a vile creature like you pick on a poor boy like this? Aye, Seamus Doyle, you stay out of this. I've come to take what's mine. <laughs> Stand aside, boy. The battle's just begun. Sorry. 
<laughs> Somebody help me with this wig. Oops. Well, let's break for the night, everyone. Good work. Jake Joyce wanted to be an actor more than anything else. His big break came when he landed the lead in Will of the Wisp, a magical play about leprechauns and goblins. It was Jake's first play, and unfortunately, it was going to be his last. Lucy! Lucy! I need my tea! I need me tea! Ah. <laughs> Just the thing. Just the thing. Hey, Lucy. Mm-hmm? What's that stuff Aaron's always drinking? Herbal tea. His own recipe. He says it helps him be creative. <laughs> it must work. He's brilliant. You think that stuff would help me? I'm not doing so hot. Oh, I think you're doing just fine, Jakey. Here's the recipe, but I doubt you'll find the ingredients. Aaron has his own stash, and I don't think he'll share. Jake! Oh, Jake! Thanks, Lucy. Good luck. Jake Miller, I feel inspired. Let's practice the jig. Sure. Look at this place. Over a hundred years old. Nearly as old as I am. Shut your eyes. Feel the magic of the stage, the power of the theater. Let it transport you into another realm and make you into a magician. Take a good long drink, sugar, so you stay pretty and fresh. <laughs> Hello? Anybody here? Whoa. <laughs> You're looking at me like I was a saint, but heed me words. You're the one who has the glamour. I'm sorry, it's just that... What do you mean, I have the glamour? Nothing at all, just a feeling. Sean O'Shane is the name. Remember it, you might be needing me. What is it I can do for you? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for, for some special herbs to make tea. Do you carry these? You've come to the right place. Me herb garden is one of the bluebells, foxgloves, and ragweed. How dare you bring this here? It's just... You'll not be getting such herbs here. A pox upon you for asking. It's just for tea. I know what it's for. Off with you, off! come back any minute. Are you sure? Yes, hurry. You'll never be a boy again. I don't care. Then dance with me. And speak as I speak. The fairy ring does dance and sing. The mortal bloom a die. The fairy ring is dance and sing, the mortal gloom a dying thing. Now turn me into spirit bright and leave behind the human light. Turn me now into a spirit bright and leave behind the human light? What? What's happening? Keep going on. Don't stop now. You run to something. No, stop. Stop it. All right, all right. That's enough. 
That's all, everybody. Good day, good day. Jake. Jake, my lad. You've got to let yourself go. What's happening to you now is the stuff of genius. Trust me. But my voice changed. I changed. It was scary. It was wonderful. I don't like it. Jake, you've got to understand. When you're making magic up here, it's like, it's like you've got the glamour. The glamour? You have the gift, boy. Use it. Mr. O'Shaney. It's me. Ah. Go away, you're not welcome here. Please, I need to know about those herbs. Yeah, I am sure you do, but I can see through you like hard crystal. Leave me be. No! Please, listen to me. You're taking me for a fool, and Sean O'Shaney is anything but a fool. Good day. But something weird is happening to me. You saw it. It's like I'm changing. What is this place? I've let you in to say your piece, so get on with it. Okay, I'm in this play. It's about a leprechaun who saves me from a goblin by turning me into a leprechaun too. Go on. But it's like the more we rehearse, the stranger I feel. Last time my voice even changed. It was scary. Aaron said that... Aaron? He's a leprechaun. He told me it was because I had the glamour. That's what you called it, too. This sounds dumb. Maybe I'm just nervous about the play. You really don't know about these herbs, do ya? Just that Aaron uses them to make tea. Oh, he does, does he? Herbs can be very powerful if used by those who know how. And if you know how to get them. How'd you get those? A trade with a springin. Yours be mine and mine be yours. Was all I took. Cost me my favorite toothpick. Yours be mine and mine be yours? Hmm. Sounds like a line from our play. When did you say this play of yours is? We open tomorrow night. Last rehearsal's tomorrow at noon. Why, you wanna come? I wouldn't miss it for all the suds in Dublin. Then dance with me. And speak as I speak. <laughs> the fairy ring does dance and sing. The mortal groom, a dying thing. Saints and stars. The fairy rings dance and sing. The mortal groom, a dying thing. <laughs> Turn me now into spirit bright and leave behind the human plight. <laughs> Turn me now into a spirit bright and leave behind the human plight. Lucy! Lucy! Who's been mucking with these ropes? I want everybody, all the actors to the green room. I'll get to the bottom. Psst, laddie. Sean, what are you doing here? Saving your life if you don't mind. What? I'm the one who released the rope. Are you crazy? You nearly killed me! Now, John Didrich is true, but it's not from me. Take a deep breath and look at yourself. His ears got pointy? Weird. Very weird. Yeah. And as Pop-Up used to say, this is where the plot thickens. 
I felt it the first time I saw you. It's the glamour. Every time you take the oath, you're a step closer to becoming a changeling. A changeling? But it's a play. It's not real. It's as real as those pointy ears. And tonight, you'll take the oath for the final time. This can't be happening. Aaron wouldn't do this to me. Hmm. He would if he is who I think he is. Where does this Aaron dwell? His room's downstairs, but no one ever goes there. He always naps before performances. Ah, oh, what better time to pay him a visit? I don't think he likes visitors. Then let's be crafty about this. Lucky charms and far-leaf clovers. <laughs> what are you doing? Help me now, lad, and I'll answer all your questions later. Just as I suspected. That's my hat. That's my picture. Leave it be. You'll know we've been here. Aaron's got a pet toad. That's no toad, lad. It's a changeling. We haven't much time. Come on. Robert, uh, time. It must be here someplace. He's coming back. Foxglove. Uh, cowslip. Ah, got it. Rowan root. Now we're in business. Let's go. We're dead. Aaron's a banshee. Aye, the cruelest of all the pixies. They drink the tea of bluebells, foxgloves, and ragweed. That's why I thought you were the one who wanted the herbs. Then what does he want with me? Ah, uh, here's where it gets sticky. They feed on human souls, the banshees do. Every seven years, they need to devour another one, leaving some poor creature in its place. The toad. The toad was a person. A changeling. That's the oath you've been taking during the play. For real. Lose this. I'll call him the dad. We'll get to police. Take it easy, Skipper. The process has already started. Look at your ears. You can't survive as half a changeling. But what can I do? You can beat him at his own game.
it's bad for an opening act. <sighs> I thought you forgot. Are you ready for the finale? As ready as I'll ever be. Nah, that's the spirit. Let's get to work. There are three rules to beating a banshee. You must do them all or the game is lost. You with me? Do I have a choice? No. Rule number one, be fearless. Swallow this. Forget it. We don't have time, Jake. Fearless. Oh, fearless. Oh. Good. Now, where's the boater bag? Now add these. Rowan tree, red thread, puts the witches to their speed. <sighs> Rule number two, give him a taste of his own medicine. Don't you drink that yourself. <laughs> don't worry. Rule number three, don't take your eyes off him. You must spellbind him. Lock your eyes with his and turn his own spell against him. Understand? Then let the angels be with you, lad. The fairy ring does dance and sing, the mortal gloom a dying thing. The fairy ring does dance and sing, the mortal gloom a dying thing. Turn me now into spirit bright and leave behind the human plight. Turn me now into a spirit bright and leave behind the human plight. Who have you been talking to, boy? I lost his gaze. <laughs> You're not afraid, are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm fearless. Do you guys see what I've seen? What is it? Did we miss this in rehearsal or something? What is this? You're all mine. <laughs> Help! Help somebody! This is really happening! <laughs> You're mine forevermore! <laughs> Hello, Gort. Or is it Aaron now? Sure, no she. Well, you're too late this time. <laughs> Gort, still up to your same old tricks. Because all tricks still work. Sean? <laughs> so you thought the little leprechaun would help you? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Seven years I've waited, and now you're mine! No! <laughs> <laughs> you're mine! <laughs> right you are, Gort. He is yours. And this... Is mine! Me too! <gasps> Indeed. But now it's mine. I've kept it all these years. Care to make a little trade? No. Yes. No. Yours be mine, and mine be yours! No! Friend, distant place, return, return to the human race. What happened? You free lad, you beat the banshee. It's not.
Will the Wisp was never performed again, and Aaron had disappeared forever. The end. And that one, Pop Up, was for you. You know that? So your dad really owns this place? Yeah, that's where I get all my story ideas. There's all sorts of strange and voodoo and occult stuff in here. <clears throat> About your stories, Gary, I shouldn't be telling you this, but well, some of the guys have been saying that they haven't been too scary lately. Who said that? I don't know. What are these? Super specs. They give you x-ray vision. Whoa, yowza! Give me a break. What's the matter? You don't believe in magic? Oh, when you do. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Sometimes it's best to keep an open mind and be ready for surprises. Yeah, well, if you ask me, I think he's slipping big time. No way. Gary tells the best stories. I like his stories. Yeah. yeah. No, no, not yet. Frank's right. I can't remember the last time Gary really scared me. <gasps> Jeez, you scared me! Sorry I'm late. Uh, David can't make it tonight. He's, uh, sick. That's okay. Kiki was just saying how your stories haven't been too scary lately anyway. I'm gonna smack you. Not scary, huh? Well, why don't you give me a shot tonight? See what I can do. You're the boss. The story I've got is about three kinds of people. People who believe in magic. People who don't. And people who should. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story... The Tale of the Super Specs. Weeds was into magic and tricks in a big way. And since April Fool's Day was coming up, he had to get ready. The dust of Dendaran. Powder monkey bones, you know, crucial every voodoo spell. I thought we were going to the movies. Later, later, I'm casting a spell. Oh, sorry. Let's see. Oh, here it is. The spell of the second sight. Umbu, Tubu, Sunrise Day. Vinsu, Ruru, Bamba Day! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's just some kind of voodoo spell. Weeds, we've been seeing each other for what? Like a long time now, right? Yeah, two weeks. I'm beginning to think that you're not very mature. What makes you say that? <laughs> oh, this is good. We're so gross. Can we go now? Come, come. Play time's over. Bye now or bye now. Okay, Mr. Sardo. I'll take uh, it's Sardo. No Mr. Accent on the toe. <laughs> yeah. Look, um, I'll take these and the monkey bones too. April Fool's Day tomorrow, he's got to stock up. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, have you seen our vomit? Hey, hey, what are these? Ah, you have a sharp eye. I've sold hundreds and thousands of those. What do they do? Some say they give you X-ray vision. Yowza. <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll take these two. I'll ring you up. 
Come on, try them on. They're good. I wouldn't wear those to my funeral. Come on, MB, lighten up. Put them on, they're cool. Cool? Well, have you seen anything? No, it's stupid. What was that? What was what? I think Mr. Sardo has got you a little wacko. Mm. Haven't pulled any April Fool stunts on us yet. Oh, that, that's stupid kid stuff. Yeah, but you're a stupid kid. What are you looking at? Man, I knew it was going to be a rip off. What's with him? Who knows? He's always. My voice. What's wrong with my voice? Great, thanks. What are those? Don't you know? These are magic glasses that make you look cool. They'd have to be magic to make weeds look cool. Don't I look cool, or do I just look like Geica? What's the matter? I saw somebody. A strange woman. Yeah, April, April Fools. Fools. Magic, okay? You don't believe me. Oh, come on, MB. What do you take me for? Some kind of doofus? Don't even answer that. Look, I'm not lying. Every time I put these stupid specs on, I see. She's there. Look by the tree. This is getting really old, MB. You don't see her? Hey! Yes! H-O-R-S, sucker. Miss this, and you're done. Raja, um, Say what? Look, this is all net this time, okay, baby? This one is going in. Airball, horse, my game. I hate this game. That's two sodas, dude. You owe me two. So I came out of the school, put on the glasses, and she was there by the tree. So she just stood there staring at me, and then she, like, pointed at me. Who was it? I don't know. Maybe it was some kind of stupid trick Weeds is playing. The guy's strange. Nobody bought me for a one-week anniversary. What? Some stupid book on mummies or something. I got it right. What's the matter? I 
thought you threw him away. I did. And she should have burned those specks or chucked them in the garbage disposal. But the apparitions weren't really there. Or were they? She didn't know. All Mary Beth knew was she could only see them through the specks. So what did she do? The only thing she could think of. She went looking for weeds. Maybe he knew what was going on. Weeds! Weeds, the specks! I swear I'm seeing things! They're ghosts! Whoa, 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 whoa. slow down, slow down. What's the matter? Whenever I put these specks on, I s Mr. Accent on the dough. Mr. Sardo, I need to speak to you. 
I'm all out of vomit. Uh, try me Tuesday. No, it's the specs my boyfriend bought. Sorry, no guarantees. If they don't work, that's your never mind. No, wait, my problem is they do work. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, scourge, um, pestilence, <laughs> plague. Oh, here it is, here it is. The spell of second sight. That's it, that's the spell we did. It's gotta be what's making this happen. It is? Uh, uh, yes, it is, <laughs> of course. Am I like seeing ghosts or something? Ghosts? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, what you're seeing is uh, another dimension. Uh, that's the second sight. Another dimension? Exactly. Uh, you see, there are there are beings all around us all the time that we can't see because they're in another dimension. That's really creepy. Hmm. The, uh, the spell must have opened up a window, probably at your house, and those specks allow you to see into a, a parallel universe. I've got a parallel universe in my house. Hmm, apparently. And, um, once the window is open, the beings can cross over into our dimension, and, uh, well, I don't mean to scare you, but they could take over. Very, very dangerous, very dangerous. So let's just go over to my house and close the window. <laughs> uh, yes, well, you see, the, the casting a spell is easy. One casting can be tricky. You need um, uh, an expert, someone who is familiar with the counter spells and how to cast them. Do you know the counter spells? <laughs> Naturally. But I have expenses. What will it cost? Fifty dollars. What? All right, twenty. But I'm losing on the deal. Okay, I guess. <laughs> good, 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 good. Now then, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, um, where's the? Uh oh. What? Uh, the dust, the dust of Dengeron. I, uh, I'm out. I, I had some here. I must have sold the last pouch to... to your boyfriend. <laughs> That's the dinner run, you big rip-off. <sighs> Prepare for a burial at sea. Adios, smoky bones. Stop! You flush this dust and you're going in after it. I love Kazam. I love Kazam. Alakazam in a crystal ball? Come on, who does he think he's kidding? Can we, like, get this done before my parents come home? Shh! I need to concentrate. I thought you didn't believe in this stuff, Mary Beth. The window. The window into another dimension. We must close the window. Oh, Ooh. Sanra Day Vinsu Rulu Bamba Nay. That's the same spell. Shh. Bamba Nay. Bamba Nay. We must close the window. Send them back. Send them back. Don't you need the dust? The what? Don't oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. The, the dust. Yes, yes. It doesn't work. Trust me. Bamba nay. Bamba nay. I am very, very embarrassed for this guy. Listen. What's that? Are you doing that? No. And B? Is this for real? What's going on? I don't know. I've never done this before. I thought you were the expert. Do something. The specs. Uh, uh, put on the specs and tell us what you see. No! Me. My breath. They're here. I can see them. Take, take off the specs. But I can see them with the specs. 
You don't need them. I see them too. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. Do something! I don't believe it. This stuff is really real. Finish the spell and close the window. Send them back. <laughs> this one! The cosmic seal! <laughs> the scent! For real, Sado! Sado! Who cares? All right, all right, all right. The spell of the cosmic seal. Nimbo! Rhombus! Rondo K! Fable! Dinkum! Flux! I think we did it. Yeah. Well, there was no cause to be worried. I had everything under control. You know, magic is very much... Oh, my. Maybe we didn't do it after all. What is it? Take the children! tampered with the cosmic seal. Two universes cannot exist on the same plane. Balance must be restored. Lux Marae! Close the window. <laughs> Funny thing is, they were trying to get rid of you too. Are they gone for good? I don't think they'll be bothering you anymore. <laughs> Universes were fighting for the same space. And the other universe won? Exactly. Because the woman in black was powerful and Sardo was a fake. That Sardo accent on the do. <laughs> Great story. And here's why I was late. Super specs! I got one for everybody as an April Fool's gift. Didn't cast any spells on them, did you? No, don't worry, they're safe. Now, when I count three, Everybody put them on. One, two, three. Well, guess your story was scary enough tonight. Guess so. April Fools. April, April Fools. Fools. <laughs> there it is. It's a grave. It's probably somebody's dog. <laughs> yeah, right. There's only one reason why you bury things out here. Why? Because you want to hide the evidence. I bet my Michael Jordan rookie card we find a maggot ridden corpse. Really? was the best. Run, run! I wasn't that scared. Yeah, right. It was cruel and immature. Hey, excuse me for adding a little fuel to the fire. Well, it wasn't funny. It's 
Speaking of futile of fire, who's going tonight? Me. Ah, another gore fest? My story is about a head of a different sort. An ancient wizard's good luck charm. Pick it up, and the world can be your oyster. But let the holder beware. This charm may be more than you bargained for. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story... The Tale of the Sorcerer's Apprentice. The story takes place today, but it began years ago. In fact, it truly began centuries ago. But I'm jumping ahead. Dean Burkham was the kind of guy who blended in. He didn't have many friends, he didn't do sports, and he never joined anything. He just kind of was. And he wasn't so great with schoolwork either. Mr. Burkham? You are sinking to perdition. One of Dean's only friends was Alex. Though she was his complete opposite, they really connected and had a great friendship. But it was a friendship about to be put to the ultimate test. Thanks, I'm useless today. You, huh? What's up? Another Crenshaw chemistry catastrophe. Ooh, ugly. I studied hard for this. I don't get it, Al. I can't catch a break. Hey, if you keep thinking that way, you're always gonna get dumped on. I know. I'm trying. Hey, I have a feeling your luck's gonna change soon. Great. Just as long as it doesn't get any worse. In World Cultures class, there was a special guest, a famous archaeologist named Dr. Oliver. Archaeology. The study of historic or prehistoric peoples by analysis of their artifacts, inscriptions, and monuments. The work is often painstaking, but the results can take you on adventures that will stagger your imagination. For instance, the high priests of Babylon used this golden dagger to cut out the hearts of slaves for their sacrifices. This bowl was used for salt. Not as a spice, mind you, but as a weapon. Some ancient cultures believed that salt was the best way to ward off evil. Sort of like garlic is to vampires. And this little prize was recently excavated from an ancient Babylonian sorcerer's tent. That thing belonged to a sorcerer? Inscriptions say that this scepter belonged to Goth, a particularly nasty magician who enslaved thousands to do his evil bidding. The writings say that following Goth will bring you incredible fortune and good luck. Crossing him will lead to your destruction. Of course, we don't believe in such silly things today, do we? Go 
path will bring you incredible fortune or lead you to your destruction. Oh, who's she kidding? I thought it was kind of cool. Give me a break. She's trying to make her job sound more exciting than it really is. Maybe. I'm going to the library. Want to come? Uh, I got some stuff to do. OK, see you later. Yesterday. Yeah. It's become a passion for me, unlocking the secrets of ancient civilizations. It's pretty cool. Indeed. Take your time. Don't be afraid to touch. Maybe I found another convert. That's what I'm here for. You may begin. Yes, Mr. Burkham. Here's my test, Miss Crenshaw. Is this supposed to be funny? Is there a problem, Miss Crenshaw? Uh, no. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Burkham. Hey, Dee Dee, wait up! What was that all about? Why didn't you take the test? I did take it. I aced it. No way. What's the matter? Don't think I can ace a test? Maybe you think I'm useless, just like everybody else. What? What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. Everything is finally right. And I'm gonna prove to everybody that I'm not the loser they think I am. Dean! But something was wrong with Dean, and Alex knew it. He wouldn't talk to her and started hanging with a whole new group of kids. And one day, things took a very strange turn. Dean? Mercuric acid? What does he want with that? Acid 
is the medium. It creates the pathway. The Belladonna plant is the nightshade. Together they create the mystic vapors. The return of Goth is at hand. Centuries for an apprentice such as you, young one. The acolytes have been gathered. We are ready. Excellent. There is one final task to be performed before I am freed from this infernal dimension of darkness. I await your command. Before the moon rises tonight, you must gather the nightshade and prepare the cauldron. The mystic vapors must be released. The cauldron will be prepared. Do this, my young apprentice, and all that you desire shall be yours, and the power of the universe will be mine. <laughs> Yesterday, on to a new school and new minds to reach. Can I help you with something? <sighs> something really strange is going on here. It's that scepter thing she brought. It's got Dean hypnotized or something. Relax, child. There is no reason to be alarmed. Join us and join God. <laughs> Alex. Don't be scared. It's only me. I am scared. What's going on? Dean, what are you doing? You called it. My luck finally changed. I'm not getting dumped on anymore. I'm in charge. And I like it. You're not in charge. It's this Goth. Goth has given me the power. And I'm using it to bring him back. Dean, he's a monster. Look at what I've done. People follow me now. They take my orders. Half the school is with me, even the teachers. Dean, look at me. He's controlling you. You've got to come back and, and fight this guy. You're my best friend, Alex. I am. Come back. That's why I'm going to let you go. Don't get in my way. It doesn't matter anyway. He'll be one of us soon enough. Mercuric acid? Sorry, Dean, it's police time. Hurry, 
The moon will rise soon. Let me go! She followed us. And she's ticked. Now back off. Are you crazy? I gave you one chance to escape, Alex. I won't give you another. Put her in the van. Dean, wake up! Excellent. They're gonna boil her in that stuff. What is it? What you call it? Acid? Mercuric acid. I hate chemistry. Now the acid has to do with those mystic vapors, right? Maybe. So what happened next? Looks like Alex's goose is cooked. Alex may have been backed into a corner, but she's resourceful. Where are we going? There's a place in the school not many people know about. It's been closed off for more than 25 years. They say the girl went mad in there. <laughs> she broke into the school one night. The guards chased her all over. When they found her, she was down here. Totally out of her mind. The room's been sealed off ever since. Until tonight, that is. Got the key from the security guard. He is one of us now. It's the perfect place to make our cauldron of mystic vapors. you'd want to stay for the main event. Stop it, Dean! Stop it now! Open the barrels! Pour the acid. Soon, my master, you will be with us. The Belladonna leaves! I'm far too powerful now! Mystic Vapors, I've done it! Rise, mighty Goth! Your apprentice calls to you!
How did you know the chlorine would stop him? He was on Crenshaw's chemistry exam. Chlorine kills bacteria and the leaves were organic, so I figured it would zap him. I guess I was right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you were. Welcome back. I'm afraid we failed. But I planted jewels in high schools all over the country. We'll have another chance. And to think, when I was a young girl, they thought I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I smell a sequel. Yeah. World's doomed. Well, on that cheerful note, I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. I've almost got the key. I just, I just need a few more points, and I can finally get hey, it. Hey, hey, what's this button do? It resets the game. Oops, sorry. Excellent. You get the key yet? No. I may never get it. Piece of cake. I'll show you. <laughs> I don't see how you guys can get so into these dumb games. I mean, they are just games. Just games? They're like the battle between good and evil. You've got to be smart and fast and always think three steps ahead. And most of all, you've got to have a lot of patience. Harvey, yeah, it's my turn. <sighs> but I mean, it's not even like it matters if you win or lose. All I wanted to do was get the key. Once. Oh, enough! Who's going tonight? I am. Let's fight over this later. Kristen's right. When you play a game like this, it really doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Because all you have to do is press reset. And you get a new game. And another chance. But what if it really did count? Imagine if you had to beat the game. Or the game was going to beat you. And there were no resets. No replays. And no second chances. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story The Tale of a Pinball Wizard. Ross Campbell was the kind of kid who was on his own a lot, so he knew how to take care of himself. If there was something he wanted, he'd do everything he could to get it. Ross did just fine for himself, but on this particular afternoon, he was about to go a little too far to get what he wanted. And unfortunately, he was going to get it. Give it to me! It's mine! No way! Yeah! Look, I saw it first! Yeah! Hey! What's going on down there? Ah, uh, here, you need it more than I do. Please stay right there! Hey, 
Mr. Olson. You thought about it? Thought about what? The job. I want the job. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to hire any more kids. Come on, Mr. Olson. I'd work cheap. Besides, you could use a talented guy like me around here. To do what? Play pinball all day? It's the only talent you've shown me. Hey, Mr. Olson, that's cool. I got plenty of talent, and you can trust me. You'd never have to fire me like you did Steven. No. Hey, new pinball game. Hands off. Forget it. Why? Because it's a collector's item. It doesn't even work right. It's missing a critical piece. Now, go play the games outside. All I wanted to do, Ow. but... Ow. Only three o'clock. I haven't had lunch yet. Come back in an hour. Wait, this is perfect. Eating lunch at three o'clock ain't exactly perfect. No, let me watch the store for you while you're out. Forget it. Give me a chance. What if a new customer comes by? If I'm here, you won't miss out on the business. You can trust me. All right. Come on, sit down. Don't move, don't touch the cash register, and don't touch any of the merchandise, especially that new game in the back. Can I go to the bathroom? No, I'm giving you a chance here, Ross. If I can trust you, I might give you a job. If not, you'll be out of here like Steven. Got it? Got it. Yeah, we'll see. in here? Uh, no. Can I help you? I left my music box here. It's supposed to be ready today. It is? Oh, yeah, sure. It is. Uh, must be around here somewhere. What's it look like? Do you really work here? Yeah. I'm in charge. Sophie, I'm Ross. My music box? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. What's it look like again? It's a throne in a gold box. A throne. Got it. It must be here somewhere. There it is. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Mr. Olson's always misplacing things. I can never find it. Are you sure it's ready? Well, I'm sorry. I don't really work here. I'm just watching the place for Mr. Olson. He'll be back in an hour. Ah, well, I've got some stuff to do, so I'll come back. Thanks, Ross. No problem. No, 
zombies again. Don't have water. This time I'm gonna crown the prince. Mr. Olson? Oh, Mom's gonna kill me. This isn't a locker key.
Box. Where is it? It's out front. Who are all these people? There's no time. I need you to get me through this. Get through what? This is like a dream. Now we have to get the tiara. Look, I'm not going to... Ah! 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 the witch. Quick, open the box. Listen, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. Look out! the tear so that I can be crowned. There! Quick, before they get here. Perfect. Ah, I'm dodgy. What do I do? The marbles! Use the marbles! Right. Stand back, boy! The game is over! Let her go! The tear! Get the tear to the third level! You can't hurt me! Yay! Now what? Sophie on the throne, I win, and it's over. This can't be the throne. It's too small. That's more like it.
going down. Oh no, I'm back at the beginning again. This is why she said I needed this. I'm gonna win this game. <laughs> Freeze! Don't be a fool, boy! You've lost! Look, I don't know what's going on here, and I don't know what you are, but if this is some kind of game, you're playing with the wrong guy. Because I never lose. <laughs> It's over, Sophie. I beat him. Look out! <laughs> the game isn't over unless all the characters die. <laughs> and I'm still here. <laughs> you shouldn't play the game, boy, unless you know the rules. But this isn't a game. <laughs> it's real. And when it's real, you can make up your own rules. No! You are out of here. No! Ah! There's one thing left. Would you do the honors? What happened? I won! I shouldn't be back here! <laughs> you told me I could trust you, Ross. But you had to play the game, didn't you? <laughs> Hope you enjoy your free games. You'll be playing them Forever. <laughs> uh, uh. When Ross saw that ball, he knew that he would never get out. The end. Here you go, Dave. Still want to give it a go? Oh, uh, no. I think I've outgrown this. It's all yours, Frank. It's okay, uh, you got a Kiki. No, you got it. Um, how about you got it, Gary? Whoever's got the game, just make sure the game doesn't get you. Night, guys. Next time. <laughs>